Welcome everyone to the final catch preview of the 2023-24 Crystal Palace season. As we welcome Aston Villa to sell us off this upcoming Sunday. I'm joined today by T, AJ, and Kara. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave us a review. Any comments are appreciated. We're on the road to 5,000. If you're listening on any of our uh, podcasts, apps like Spotify or Apple, again, leave us a review, a comment. We really do appreciate it. Um, welcome, everyone, to our final uh, preview. Uh, T, how's it going? It's going good, man. Going good. Um, riding on the high, going into the last week, hoping for uh, the best, man. I mean, a lot of good things happen with Crystal Palace. Uh, women are champions. Got European champion academy. You know, uh, men's team is is on a roll, man. So, you know, long may it continue. AJ, how about you? How you been? Busy. Not seen you in a while. Very busy. You know, so is the life of a. Uh a full-time job but um yeah man I agree with T man you know things are on the up man everything's positive right now we'll take it uh you know potential 10th place finish considering where we were sort of beginning of January winter period it was looking quite dire uh and a certain big R word was getting pushed around uh you know championship football but that's obviously clearly not the case we made some very clever decisions uh in the back room and you know everything's been positive recently uh i think the women's team's done amazing i think obviously the young players did amazing yesterday which i know we'll touch on um and the first team are doing really really well so uh that's i couldn't be more happy with the way things are right now great and cara welcome back how are you today i'm good thanks oh, great after hearing those two like you can't help but be positive can you i was uh joking with my uh fellow palace fan at work the only just two of us um that it does feel a little bit like a holiday romance and then we're going to have this like summer in between and are we going to visit each other again in september and be like ah the vibe's kind of gone actually like it's you know in reality this doesn't work but i hope not so we just got to enjoy it one more game enjoy it and hope that the uh the vibe's still there in september in august and september yeah, it's funny. It's the first time ever, I'm pretty sure ever, I've ever wanted a season to end and not end at the same time. Yeah. It's, it's the weirdest feeling ever, yeah. but such is what we call the Glasner effect. So let's go into some Palace news and I'll get you guys' comments on it. Um, basic, uh, since we last were on the show, um, the team announced that we've signed uh, extensions for Will Hughes, Joel Warden, Jeffrey Schlupp. Previously, Jordan Ayew has signed an extension and right now, uh, Klein is undecided and also Remy Matthews and undecided. So let's go to UT. What are your thoughts on um those particular extensions? I mean, I, I like the extensions. I think they're good ones. Um all were players that I felt were um pretty likely candidates uh for them. The only other only other one I, I thought that possibly could we could see one with is uh Nathaniel Klein, which apparently is is possibly still out there. Um, I think with the way that, you know, uh, Will Hughes has played uh, towards the end of the season, I think he's, you know, earned it, so to speak. And um, we all know Jeff, Jeff Schlupp, he, uh, he gets a wonder goal every time he needs an extension. So, <laughs> so we know what was coming with that. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I'm not upset about him at all. I think that, uh, they're, they're solid rotational additions for us. Um, I think I, I said earlier on Twitter was that um, like the signing of a guy like Schlupp, the only thing I hope for is that it doesn't block some of the other guys that are trying to come through the first team, trying to really solidify themselves, um, a la um, a Mateus Franza. Gotcha. Um, Cara, uh, what are your thoughts on we didn't – we're not going to be signing uh... – James Tompkin and, and Gyro. Um, me personally, I, I love Gyro, but he never really got an opportunity here. What are your thoughts on you know letting those two uh, go? I think honestly, I think I said it in the WhatsApp whenever the uh, news first came out. But it, I was like, oh, we're a serious club. Like we're letting go of people we don't play. 
we're not just keeping hold of people for the sake of keeping hold of them anymore this is great um so I think it's positive I think you know anything I am with you my heart broke a little bit um to see Jairo go but it's the right thing to do um and I think any room for kind of it's not just about the money that comes in and goes out on transfers it's the the wages as well isn't it so if we're kind of making moves to to bring that that wage bill down then that's a good sign that we are going to be uh, looking to do some business in the summer um in line with what we all hoped we would see um especially since glasner came in and we know that that's kind of been a sticking point for him in the clubs that he's been in um been at in the past um so i think it's just yeah a real sign that we're we're building Glasner's uh, kind of squad now um, going into the summer. And I'm just excited to see whatever whatever that looks like, whoever comes in and fills those seats. Yeah, um, those seats being filled, actually. So yesterday, time recording, I wanted 21s won the International Cup, beating uh, PSV Young 1-0 at Sellers Park. Great to see them left the trophy. I watched the entire game. Goal was scored by Franco Uma, who's actually transitioned from being a forward to a now left wing back. Um, in the under 21s under Darren Powell. So AJ, um, one, I wanted to talk to you about if you, ever, if you had a chance to see the highlights of the game. But more importantly, there were some players in that lineup that I think might have a chance next season to replace people like James Tompkins and uh, Gyro. Those maybe being obviously David Ozo, Jez Raksaki, Danny Imre, Frank Auma. So what are your thoughts on one on the win yesterday, which is tremendous, but also on you know the 20 uh, players for next season stepping in? There's some great talent there. Um, the only thing is I haven't seen, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen any signs from the new manager to specifically fast track any of those young players into the team unless they were sort of there and thereabouts apart from um, Ozo, really. Um, once he's got a proper preseason and a summer uh, to sort of work with him a little bit more consistently, then I'll probably make a better judgment of it then. Um, I think we've always had the young talent. I mean, that goes without saying. Even before, well, probably before, even when Patrick was probably my age. So let's get him back a bit. But um, in all fairness... Easy, easy, um, easy, easy, easy. Take it easy. Um, but in all seriousness, though, um, we've always been a club that's been able to produce really young, exciting players. But I think it's just going to be a case of the manager's done enough for me to kind of trust the judgment in the sense that he's not going to put any of those players in that team unless he thinks they're 110 percent ready no matter how much we rate them and how much we want them to sort of break into the team i don't think there's going to be a situation where he will just put them in there almost for the sake of it uh, or just because they've been successful at their level because often you hear a lot of people say that making that tr transition from youth football going into first team premier league football is extremely difficult um you know Imre is a really interesting one that you mentioned because i think he's been brilliant this season he's scored a lot of goals and he's created a lot of goals as well and he's been brilliant coming forward can he do that at a first team level we'll see i just don't want to fall down the trap of getting sucked into the idea because the young players have been successful this year that all of a sudden we're going to start seeing four, five, six, maybe even more of them coming into the first team because it's clear to me that the manager has some sort of plan and idea. And I think we have to realistically understand that there might be a chance he may not actually give them the opportunities that we think they deserve. Um, and at the end of the day, I will back the manager with that because he's been successful wherever he's been. And look at what he's done with the team already. Uh, same goes for the contract extensions and the players being released. I don't particularly feel a way about it because I, I trust his judgment and he's given me more than enough to do that. You know, historically what he's done with the teams in the past, being successful in Europe uh, and obviously German leagues. Um, and then kind of looking into the players that he's decided to keep on. Uh, one of the players in that list I'm not too thrilled about, but, you know, I have to back the manager you know, he's given me nothing to sort of suggest that he's, you know, doing it for the sake of it. So I'm really excited for those young players. Maybe there might potentially be some loans in there for them if there's no opportunity or pathway into the first team. I think there's plenty of opportunities for them to go out and loan. Um, and I hope that they've showcased enough to create that interest for them as well and get those opportunities. But one thing I think I think a lot of fans need to kind of realise and re seeing that he's not thrown a lot of kids into that team so i don't know if that's something that 
maybe a circumstantial because he had to get points on the board or maybe it was a situation where he had to sort of worry about safety before sort of taking the chances. Um, so I'm going to hold fire before I start making judgment in terms of progressing those young players into the first team. I know what you're saying about not letting them, letting them have an opportunity, but I think it's a little early to judge that because, again, he's only been here for 12 or so games. Um, a lot of players that were injured started coming back. So Gahey was back in the lineup. Um, obviously, Alisa and Eze came back in the lineup. And those are spots where we probably wouldn't would have seen a youngster maybe get a chance. Um, we, we was, he was started playing really well. So there is that. I wanted to ask you, Real T, did you get a chance to the game yesterday? Did it one game at all? I did not get to see it. Um, okay. I uh, so I was I was uh, constrained to to using t- Twitter, and uh, then you know I watched the match highlights um, once they were available. But uh, it, it I, I depended was, it, on you it, a lot too in 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 the group chat. In the group chat, yeah. <laughs> so um, just just um, you know, Joe Whitworth, who um was the captain of the and he's the goalkeeper, had a fantastic game. Must have made it upwards of eleven to twelve saves. It was really really good. And I think next season you're going to see players like Whitworth. Ozo, I'm thinking about second like go out and loan to a championship side because I think they're at that that level yet. We also have quite a few players coming back. Like I said, we've got Killian Phillips will be back in the, in here. Uh, Malachi Boateng will be coming back, so there are going to be players. Scott Banks, you know, we don't talk about Scott Banks at all, and I don't know what's going to happen with him, but his yeah, because uh, he's a part. Of, he, he got he was with St. Pauli, and they got uh they got promoted, promoted to Bundesliga. Unfortunately, he got injured. He got injured at the beginning of the season. He played like only two yeah. games, but he might be back. So again, I trust uh, Glass's judgment on what he'll do, but that's important to understand that. I think next year we will see some players get a chance, but you know how many? Who knows? Very quick, I want to go on to the under 18s. They beat Reading on uh, Saturday, two 0 They finished sixth in the U18 division, and I don't want to f- uh, forget about the women's team. Now, Cara, you know, you and I were talking about the women's team. You know, just like the men's team, when the season ends, you go through releasing players, etc. We had six low knees. Do you want to go through the? players that have moved on uh, or gone back to the uh, parent clubs for me, please? Yeah, sure. I'll give a quick rundown, then just a few thoughts. Uh, so we've got Demi Lamborn. She was uh, our goalkeeper. Uh, so she made 19 appearances, has uh, kept clean sheets for the uh, for four out of our last five games. So, like, incredible um, performances from her. Um, Rhea Percival in defence. Um, she scored a goal, uh, most noticeably, at Sellers Park against Watford. Um, only Palace's uh, Palace Women's second victory at Sellers Park in our history. Um, Lexi Potter in midfield. Uh, she joined us on loan from Chelsea, having just become the uh, youngest uh, female player in England to sign a pro contract. She's just 17 years old, which blew my mind. I made me feel really old. Um, but yep, yeah, she is off. Um, and our favourite, Patrick Arai Dennis, uh, who has also just been crowned uh, with the championship goal of the season, which yeah, is amazing. That was for her goal against Charlton. Yeah. Yeah, I know we spoke about it. Was it a couple of shows ago, maybe? Um, well, well, well deserved. Uh, I'm gutted that she won't be a Palace player next season. But uh, obviously, if you're Arsenal, you don't want her playing against you, do you? So however good your your first team is. Uh, then we move on to Lucy Watson. Uh, eight appearances for her. She uh, When she joined us, been coming back from an ACL injury. Um, so good, at least, that she kept healthy throughout the season. Uh, great to see that. And then finally, uh, Kira Barry. Unfortunately, just one appearance um, as she was played with injuries. She joined us from Man United. But in that one appearance, she did get one goal. So she can say that she has a 100% scoring record for the season <laughs> if you don't dig too too uh, deep into those um but some of the thoughts i just wanted to share on that was that list and the kind of uh, shift that those players uh, uh put in for this season and to get the victory that we did shows quite how reliant on loanies we have been this season uh, and that changes when you go up to the WSL it's not quite uh, you know Arsenal, Chelsea and Man United aren't falling over themselves to give you their young players they're going to go to other clubs uh, in the championship and rightly so so I think the question that Palace have to step up and hopefully answer um, is it's back to the drawing board of building a squad again. Uh, obviously, Laura Kaminsky did it at the beginning when she came in last season. She did it, built a team to win the championship. So we've just got to look and see, you know, of the players that um, we currently have that weren't loanees, who of them are going to make the step up um, to the WSL? Uh, who are we going to get in? And how does she go about kind of building that um, team uh, to, to break the bit of the curse that we, we spoke about uh, a couple of weeks ago um, which is teams kind of going up and then coming straight back down again um, so we we don't want that to be us we've got everything going in our favour so it's just kind of watch this space to see if we uh, we manage to pull that off 
Yeah, um, again, it's been a tremendous season for the women's team. Those who are watching on YouTube, I actually have the champions uh, mm -hmm. t-shirt. Came in the mail yesterday. You know, go support the women's side. So uh, a great job. I'm looking forward to next season a lot. Hopefully, I definitely plan when I come over, I'm going to come over at least two, three times next season to make sure I plan to go to a couple of women's games while I'm over for the men's side. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let's look back quickly on Wolves. Uh, brilliant 3-1 uh, win. Um, Goals by Elise, Eze, and Mateta. Um, unfortunate red card for Ahamada. But um, T, what do you what were your thoughts on that game? I thought it was a very interesting tactical matchup. You know, very teams playing very similar types of uh, of uh, um, formations. Gary O'Neill, I think, is a decent manager tactically. Glasner has done a great job. You know, incorporating this this three four three. You want to call it three two whatever you want to call it but you know just having the wing backs and the, the two number 10 what are your thoughts on the game against wolves t well coming into it i was actually really interested in seeing what's going to be like for exactly what you said this is the first time i think we've since we've had klasner i, I don't think we've played a team that has a a system so similar to ours yeah, three in the back no i don't yeah, remember playing, either, playing right. three at the back um so i was interested to see how how we came out and played against it um I was a little bit surprised by the amount of possession that they had. I thought we were going to have uh, a little bit more possession. Uh, I think I, I feel like comparatively to some other teams, they they probably had a higher amount of possession than some of the the bigger sides that, that we played recently. But um, we definitely didn't start out um, as as well as we have uh, in past matches. Um, definitely started slow, but you know this is one of those. One of those uh, matches where you know you just got to take whatever opportunities they give you, and and we did a really good job with with conversion um, and, and taking those chances and those opportunities that we got. Man, um, it wasn't the cleanest victory, but I think as far as development for a team, I think it's important to be able to get wins in this fashion. You know what I mean? It's not always going to be just a crazy thumping or. You know, um, in certain situations, maybe a narrow victory, but the ability to to, to still win a convincing way, three one, but not be the the most clean, the most clean or the most effective as we were, but to still win a match uh, the way we did was, was was positive. AJ, did you catch the match at all? I caught the highlights, but um, thoughts. Uh, for me, I think it's a case of business as usual right nowadays, to be fair. Um, I thought we were excellent. I mean, the usual names on the score sheet, I think it's just developing consistency with what we've got. Um, you know, when it, when Glasner sort of first walked through the door, it sort of took him a minute or two to sort of get going. And uh, <laughs> the joke at work was uh, you had no new manager balance, but I think he was always growing and putting the system together. And I think the way that the that we pass around sort of straight from the back and stuff like that. We, we just sort of look like we're comfortable and in control of every situation. In every game that we even, you know, whether they attack us, go for the counter, no matter what the secure circumstances is, because every player in that starting 11 is putting in a, essentially a 10 out of 10 shift in terms of pressing from the front, we're in a situation where we look like we're just comfortable in every single game we go into. I don't think, probably since the turn of what, mid-March time, we've looked, gone into a game and I've sat there and thought, oh, no, we're in danger here, to be fair. So I was just pretty happy and relieved, to be fair. I think Elise Magic is just enjoy it while it's still here. Eze, business as usual, looks cool, relaxed, comfortable on the ball. Mateta's in the form of his life, I think. Uh, you know, Wharton and everything in the middle of the park is doing excellent things. I think we can only sort of get better uh, when you add the core rate to that mixture um and all the other potential absentees obviously gay that's not all here or there uh subjects of what happens this summer um but i'm not going really to speculation about that but i just think we're in a situation where this team could get better but we have to have to back the manager we have to get him the players that he needs um do i expect us to spend two three hundred million pounds no not in this lifetime um but as long as we can just get maybe another two, maybe three players from the door and maybe shed some of the excess weight in the squad that we, you know, i.e. starting with Tompkins and Gyro uh, and potentially moving on to a sale or two. I think the, um, 
we're going to be in a really, really good position. One highlight I did want to mention was it was a shame that Hamada obviously got his red card because from what I saw, I thought he was actually very, very good. Um, I agree. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was the first game he started ever for us uh, or where he started start. in the first half for us. Right. He started, and came I thought on he was really good. Though. Yeah, he was really, really good. And I think that the factor was obviously that he just looked comfortable. And it just goes to show when you give a certain player a type of opportunity, rather than sort of just giving them the little five minutes here, five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes here, he can be productive for you as well. Obviously, he knows the language. He knows the systems. He's obviously played in Germany as well. So that's going to be something he's very, very familiar with, with the manager. And the manager obviously likes him. So a special shout out to Armada. Obviously, the red card, shame, is a bit disappointing. But I still think he did enough to warrant maybe getting a few more games coming into next season. I, I agree. Um, I am. I have done. I have done so much research on on Glasner because I think tactically he's been phenomenal. To to think that when he came here, how we were struggling and we were playing a different system, and how he's come in and changed us around is amazing. So I have some stats. So let me hit it. You hit it on yourself. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, because because Nick's not here, and, and so, Nick probably sent it to you. <laughs> exactly. So under Roy, can I just wait before yeah. before before you go, go on? Yeah, did I just can I just check? Did you re, did you record that yourself? No, no, Nick did. Nick Gillard, not me. Are you mad? Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I was no, Nick did it. I'm not that talented and or um egotistical to do that. Um, so under Roy Hodgson, we had 24 points in 24 matches. On the Glasgow, we have 21 points in 12 matches. Paddy and Ray got us one point. So that's 46 points in 37 games, which is amazing. Glasner's uh, record as a manager. Um, at last, his first season got promoted. Second season, they were... Sorry, first season on, at last, he got them promoted. Second season, they ended up uh, like third in the division. Wolfsburg, um, they were seventh and then they ended up fourth the second season at frankfurt they were 11th he got them to seventh in the, in the division so the point is obviously right now we are 12th we got a chance to finish 10th the chance of um well, uh, finishing higher even next season is is ridiculous on the glasgow so far palace are fourth most points earned in the premier league since he's been there um we scored the fifth most goals and we exceeded the third fewest and if we score one more goal on Sunday, we'll have scored the most goals ever in the Premier League, which is, again, ridiculous. Um, obviously, you know the, the stats for, um, if you don't know the stats for Mateta, he got 16 goals this season and four assists. That's 20 goal contributions. That's the most of any Palace players since he got promoted. That's more than Punching got, Zaha, and Teke. It's been transformation that I, I, I honestly, <laughs> it's, it's, hard, it's really hard to, um, to even fathom. So let's move on to the the Villa game. Um, we have uh, there are going to be changes, and the main change is going to be if you don't know, uh, I just I read today, Will Hughes is going to be out for five weeks with that knee injury. So definitely we'll be have a change in that lineup. So I'll go to you, Kara, with Hughes definitely out and Gahey pushing very much to get back in the lineup for the Euros. What are your thoughts on a uh, lineup for uh, for Sunday? I actually didn't know that Hughes was out for that long. I just had yeah, a little crumb. Yeah, I put that out there, yeah. <laughs> um, I think there's no, I mean, there's no need to start gay. Let's start there. Um, is there really? Like, say, if he wants to try, try and kind of stay fit, what's the point in starting him and, you know, risking him? You might as well bring him on a bit later in, on in the game, to be honest. Um, I just think oh, last game of the season, like, We'll see how Villa come out, but is anyone expecting them to come out really hard for this game? Like they've already, uh, you know, qualified for Europe. I, I just, I don't see the point in risking, uh, uh, risking them at all. Um, and then in terms of for Hughes, so is Arm can Armada start or is he now? No, nah, red card suspension. He's done for the season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who have we got available? Who else is fit? Ozo Schlup. Two most likely candidates, I'm guessing. Yeah, um, I guess. I gyro, guess that, gyro could play. I mean, gyro, still, of course. Oh my gosh, of course, yeah. Gyro. Yeah, good I mean, he's still good he's still there, still part of the team. So I mean, he and he's played some significant minutes too. So he might get in there. 
I wonder then, I wonder then will he start up and then maybe bring Gyro on as a farewell, um, you know, in the second half, depending on how it's going. Um, I'm, I'm saying all of this, assuming that by half time we're going to be up at least two goals because that's just what we do now, apparently. Um, so yeah, I think I think I would do something like that. Like I'm kind of laid back about it because it's the last game of the season. Like I say, I don't think Villa are going to come out playing that hard I think it's just more about kind of who do we want to see on the pitch and protecting the players that that need a little bit of protection uh going into the summer um so yeah let's say schlup starts gyro in what 60 minute mark something like that depending on how the game goes uh t would you make any uh changes uh obviously the real use part aside gay he friendly I mean, that's a tough one because, I mean, naturally something has to be done in the midfield um, with not having Hughes or Ahamada available. So, I mean, and, and the fact Ozo just played 90 minutes in that uh, in that in that European championship game. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm maybe I, I, I probably maybe you start gyro. I, I don't know. I mean. Um, I think the thing, the question is, and, and I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. Do you start gay? Because this could be his last match as a Palace player. Thinking the same exact thing. You know what I mean? Thinking like, the same exact thing. So I, I think out of those two spots, I think everything else could stand to stay the same um, outside of those two speaking points. To be honest. Yeah, right, right now, Villa as. Uh, Cara mentioned, you know, they qualified for the Champions League. If you didn't see on social media, they had a, a massive party at the end of end of uh, season awards. So half of them might be not quite ready to play on Sunday, you know. But they haven't. They've got no wins in the last five. Uh, they've got two two to Chelsea, a four two loss to Olympia, cost in the Conference uh, League semis, and then lost it subsequently two nil. Lost to Brighton one nil, and they drew Monday versus Liverpool. Um, but they're a good team. Uh, Emery is a great manager. You know, won trophies at PSG, Sevilla, Villarreal. I don't know if they didn't win, was Arsenal. But um, AJ, who do you think we should be uh, worried about? Should they play their regular lineup on uh, on Sunday? You know, Watkins, Louise, those kind of players. They have many, 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 many threats in that team. I think, um, you know, they even got Duran, uh, who's out here doing bits scored, for them. Who scored um, Monday, right? Exactly, yeah. So they've got plenty of talent. I mean, Emery's not an idiot. He won't let them play. Those players take their foot off the gas too much. Um, yeah, you're right. They have uh, qualified for Europe, the Champions League, well. So very, very impressive. A uh, little bit jealous, but you know, don't worry. One season will be there. Um, but seriously, I think there's going to be a bit of a hangover effect. I feel like there's a bit of Euros is kicking in as well and I feel like Aston Villa is the kind of club where maybe national teams could put a little pressure on them and say listen you know European championships let's let's, let's rest a couple of players um but kind of what you were saying previously is I'm hoping a little bit over to be fair uh I saw the celebration video and them going all crazy and all the rest of it maybe a couple of them drunk a little bit too much maybe you know slipped and twisted their ankle a little bit at the party you know fingers cross um but they have many a threats. I think naturally Watkins and Duran are the ones um that come to mind straight away. Also, Leon Bailey. Yeah. Uh, they've got Leon Bailey is a phenomenal player. The RB, another phenomenal like they've got quality everywhere, you know. And uh, even if you look at their bench, what they've got Telemans on the bench, they got bloody they got all sorts of quality. So I uh, it's not gonna be an easy game. Uh but Sellers Park, the vibes, the atmosphere, Glasnabal, anything is possible. Anything is very, very possible. Plus, I think that if I'd read correctly, just based on what you were saying behind beforehand, I'm so sure I read somewhere that Lerma possibly may be fit. I'm so Thank sure you. about that. No, you're absolutely right. I saw him in a video or a picture today training. You're absolutely right. I forgot to mention he is going to be back for this game. Whether he'd start or not, I would doubt it. But he's definitely available to play. So you're right. Now you've got you've got Schlup, Ozo, but again, he did play a lot yesterday. Lerma and Gyro. I think T's shout of Gyro makes the most sense next to Schlup because again, you know, he does like Schlup and he just be signed to another one year extension. But I do you're absolutely right. Lerma will be available at some point in that match. It's a great shout. So um 
we haven't done particularly well against them in the last five games. Um, who recalls the uh, the last uh, the previous game? I remember three one this season. They scored two goals, three yeah. goals in the last like eight minutes. Oh, one in tremendous. at the very end, they scored yeah. like a couple of them, like yeah. back to back. Like was as, eighty, what was it? The eighty seventh minute they scored their first goal. Leon Bay, then... Bay J said right, and yeah. then Louise got a ninety plus eight penalty, and then. Duran, who AJ mentioned, well, that actually was their 11. that was their goal of the season. Yeah. That was asked that one Aston Villa's goal of the season. Duran's great. goal. I'm glad he got us. it now and doesn't get it later on. So that wasn't great. Three one. Prior to that, we lost to them one nil um, under um, Vieira Anderson on goal. Remember away? That was a tough loss. But we did beat them three one. Um, August two twenty twenty two. Zaha got two. Mateta scored. I mean, one one prior to that, so it's 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 kind of hit and miss with us and, and Villa. It hasn't been great, but go ahead. Patrick, I've got a stat for you actually on this. Shall I play? So, no, I won't play the song. No, no. don't. Um, we have apparently won more Premier League home games against Villa than any other opponent, beating them seven times. That's six a mad out of the last eight. That's brilliant. Thanks. Wow. Thanks to the beast. Well, I'm looking at you know what? Looking at the stats, I do see. Uh, a 3-2 win 2021 uh, versus Villa, and that's 3-1 I mentioned. So there's two, but we did lose one of them. We did lose 2-1 to Villa at home in 2021 when Gay had the own goal. I mean, scored his scored a goal. So it has been decent. And not a lot of draws in there, by the way. It's either we win or they win. So should be, anybody have any last thoughts before I ask for a prediction? Anybody have any last thoughts or comments about the game on uh, Sunday? It's the last game of the season. I'm going to miss Glass the ball. We just want it to be a party, don't we? Score loads of goals, have a great time, see this team do their thing. Would would love to see um, possibly the, the new home kit make a debut, possibly. That'd be awesome to see. Um, not see I actually, no, wait. About it. Go ahead. I have a bit of a pet hate about that. Well, I've okay. never Go been ahead. a fan of bringing out the next season's kit. Why not, like Liverpool do that a lot. They always bring out the kit like, I'm with you. early. I'm with you, AJ. I don't like it either. And it's like... That. I'm not a fan of that, you know. I, I, maybe it's just me, or maybe it's a bit of a weird pet hate I've got. But wearing next season's kit, a game early at the end of the season previous, I've, I've never been a fan. Never ever like that. I, I, I can't even describe as to why, but it's, something about it just feels, feels wrong. I'm with you. Uh, there's and been a lot of rumors. Though, right, but the thing is that there've been rumors I haven't seen any. Usually on online, you see some kind of renditions of it. I've not seen one. Plus, I know Cinch will not be our sponsor next season, so to put out a kit without a sponsor is going to be a bit weird. Normally, it's the same sponsor the year before, so but who knows? Kara, do you have any um any other things you want to add as far as uh, Sunday? I don't. I no. I just just a reflection of how we started the show, really, which is like if you'd have asked us a few months ago if we'd have uh. been like at this point. I yeah. was joking with you earlier, Patrick, like when I was just doing some last minute reading before uh, before we came on, on the like gossip section of the BBC website, it's like PSG considering making a move for Mateta. I mean, come on, if you'd have asked yep. anyone six months ago, they'd have been like, yeah, all right. Uh, and Napoli too, apparently. Napoli to uh, play <laughs> yeah. Austin. For you, Champions League, cost 60 million. Not yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I did say to Patrick, if it's a straight swap for uh, Mbappe, then I'll, I'll maybe consider it. But um no, I, I, just just insane that we can twelve games can completely change the way that we feel about an entire season. That you know, around Christmas time, we all just wanted it to end there and then, and just skip skip through to August. So uh, I'm just happy that we have. Looks like that we might be reaching the next level after all. So uh, let's see if Paris delivers it this time. I will say this then, right? So if results go our way, being obviously the b word down south if they don't get they don't win on sunday and we win we could finish and bournemouth don't win we could finish as high as 10th which would be absolutely ridiculous so if you know our history right so real quickly 11th for our first season then 10th 15th 14th 11th 12th 14th 14th 12th 11th last season so to finish 10th would be the only second time ever we've been in the top 10 in the season that would be absolutely ridiculous so let's end it on our Last predictions of the season. I'll go with you first, T. What's your prediction for Sunday's match? Uh, I'm going to say I, I think uh, Villa might be a little bit on the beach, coasting a little bit. So I'll go 2-1 Palace. 
You want to go with goal scorers or are you going to go, go with that? Just give me the, the score. You want to get goal both? scorers? I'll I'll go with uh, Mateta and Ebbs. Okay. AJ, what are you thinking? Richie Palace. Okay. Goal scorers or no? Chris Richards, Mateta, and Elise. Cara, what are you thinking? 3 1. Uh, Elise and Mateta. And the, my third goal scorer is just purely who I want to score, not who I think is going to score. And that is Wharton. I just want him to get a goal and just have the time of his life uh, right, yeah. to celebrate the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm fair. Gonna, I like that one. <laughs> I'm going to go 4 0 Palace. I just think that yeah. Villa will be so out of it and don't care. We're gonna want to leave the fan. By the way, AJ, you going? You going Sunday? Fifty-fifty, to be honest. 50, 50. All right. So I'll go four 0 Uh Like Carl, I want to see Wharton score. I'll give Wharton a goal. I want to give Gay a goal before he leaves us. Mateta, of course, will score because he always does. And Alisa will get a goal. So we'll go. We'll go four 0 Done. Yeah, one sorry, just doing that, sure. Patrick, has made me think. Are we gonna see Edward brought on for the last game of the season? You know what? That's Assuming great... that he's going. Do you know what? He needs I think he needs another goal or two to get to double digits, right? I think he has eight this season. Was it eight or seven? So I think we'll see him at some point. So now might be for the last time. I think he I think he's probably off, so that'd be interesting if yeah. he does come on. So Anyway, I want to really thank T, Car, and AJ for being on this preview. It's the last of the season. I am not sure what D has planned. He's still in Turkey working hard, um, but I'm sure there'll be an end of season wrap up of some kind. But it will definitely be a post match reaction on Saturday. Play ratings. I've been down to do it, but D's been busy or whatever. So we haven't had a chance to do the last couple. But hopefully hey, man, you got me, month. man. If you need me, I, I, yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I can fill I in. You know? I think I'll have you do it. <laughs> these, get not, these, these been kind of kind of busy. But again, from me, Patrick, T, AJ, Kara, thanks for joining us all season. Hopefully we're on a European run for next season. But until next time, up the palace.